And Devin McCourty joins us on the Harbor One Hotline this morning. Hey, Devin. Good morning. How you doing? Doing well. How about you guys? Doing great. You were on a football team that beat Patrick Mahomes in the playoffs. What's the, what's the secret? I don't know. That seems like a long time ago since we did that. Um, <laughs> but I, I do think, I think from, you know, even watching the film, I think one of the key things for the Niners will be, um, one, how much zone do they play? I think Mahomes and throw Kelsey in there, too, of how well they play against the zone. Baltimore's defense is the best defense in football this year, and they elected to play a lot of zone against Kansas City, and I thought Mahomes, he ate it up, those guys getting open. Um, so I think that'll be a big thing. And then I think you got to get to Mahomes without sending extra guys. So how well does Nick Bolsa, Chase Young, um, and, and Hargrave and those guys play up front um, will be a big indication if San Fran's able to slow them down and get a win. Steph, isn't that really the most important piece? Because if you really look at when, and Curtis is going to love this one, Tampa Bay beat Kansas City in the Super Bowl, it was because they were able to really, really make things frustrating back there for Mahomes. You pay Nick Bosa all that money, you trade for a guy like Chase Young. Uh, isn't gonna, isn't that really going to determine whether or not this game is won is what those guys up front can do? Yeah, I think that's the key piece of it, and I think – Whenever you talk about, you know, rushing and, and getting to the quarterback, you got to have your coverage marry up to what you're doing. So if those guys are getting to the quarterback. Uh, I think like that Tampa game you watched, we were talking about Levante David and, Dave, and Devin White all game because they were just getting on guys. They were getting in Kelsey's face. They were matching the running backs fast. So that has to be a part of it too. They can't just, even though you're getting pressure, let Mahomes make easy, quick throws because he, know, he understands the game. If you're getting to him, He's going to get it to guys and let them run with the ball. So I think they have to make sure they just match it up. If those guys are rushing well, get the secondary, get the linebackers, get them in the face of guys and not give Mahomes the easy completions. Devin, here at home, what are you making out of Gerard Mayo and how he's putting his staff together? Because there's a lot of talk about Elliot Wolf, uh, him basically being the GM of this team and putting together a staff that are all friends of his. Yeah, I mean, that's how the NFL works. Not, not many people hire people that have zero connection to what they do from ownership all the way down to the last guy on the roster. There's usually something that someone has a connection to. They know this coach, that knows that coach. So um, it's, what to be, it's what's, what I expected. I mean, I think, I think the, the biggest thing is everyone was wondering when this whole thing came together, who was going to be the GM? Now that it seems like it's Elliot Wolf, people are like, man, this is crazy. Elliot Wolf's the GM and he's hiring his friend. Like, to me, you kind of figured that was going to happen. But I think in all these coaching decisions, no one knows what it actually means until these guys go out there and they coach games together. They go and they compete because no matter what, we can sit here and look at some of these great hires now and say how great it was. But at the time, you know, Mike McDaniel gets hired in, in you know, Miami – Mike McDaniel didn't call plays. Everyone was like, well, Kyle Shanahan calls the plays. We don't know what he's able to do. Then he goes out there and he's calling the offense and it looks great. So it'll be interesting. I think they seem like they're putting together uh, what seems it might be a cohesive staff, people they believe in. A lot of things I've heard about some of the people they've hired has been they're good people. They're, they're overall people that players love, players went to, players sort out. Even uh, Van Pelt, I talked to Jacoby Brissett. And that was one of the things he said. He was like, he's really good with quarterback. He enjoyed his time. So I think that's a big part. Devin, judging by the offseason moves by Robert Kraft since they parted ways with Belichick, it strikes me that basically they're saying that Bill Belichick was the only problem. They've elevated Wolf. They still have Matt Groh. When it comes to the roster building, why did they not decide to make any bigger changes when it comes to the people that are charged with putting the roster together? I, I, I don't know. I mean, I couldn't answer that question. I think I think the, the last thing I would say from that thing is Bill was the only problem because I think that ignores everything he's ever done. I think sometimes we got to make sure we're not short-sighted on how we talk about people. Like we can't say, you know, he was the only problem as if, the, the, all the positive things didn't happen. I think they felt like it was time to make a change with the head coach and, and what his role was uh, on the team. I think that was the biggest thing that they felt they needed to do. 
And I think then they went into, all right, what what are we going to do now? And I think in the NFL, we always have to remember the decisions that are made right now aren't always the decisions in the next five years that are going to still be in place. So it seems like they decided, you know, we're going to move on from Bill, and now they're putting together what they think is the best thing for the team right now. So um, the biggest thing is you have to wait and see. That's what the NFL is all about. Is this the best thing? Is this going to work? And they're going to be under a microscope nonstop because of what Bill was able to do there. And once you move on from him, everybody in New England area is expecting big things. And um, that's the pressure that they're going to be under this year. One from the professor this morning. Go ahead, professor. Morning, Devin. Uh, so the San Francisco 49ers have the number one zone rushing offense in all of football, and the four, and the, the Chiefs defense is 31st against zone rushing attacks. If you're Steve Spagnuolo, how are you kind of dialing up anything to, to try and stop and or at least limit Christian McCaffrey? Because you know he's going to get his, but how do you at least try and limit that? Well, one of the big things is don't read all of those stats of where you rank and stuff because <laughs> then it seems like you shouldn't even go out there and play a football game. <laughs> um, How about set the edge and get off the double team? <laughs> I think I think with Spagnola, I think we've seen he, he's going to have a plan. And I think the beauty of the Super Bowl, you know, being the, the ones I've played in, is you have two weeks to come up with a plan. So, like, a lot of those stats, a lot of times when you watch the game, become so irrelevant because – you can't put in a whole new offense, but you can put in enough wrinkles. You can put enough different blitzes in it. Like, you can do a lot in those two weeks that you have to prepare. So I think Spagnola is one of the better guys from a defensive mind that's going to have a game plan that might not be exactly what we saw against the uh, Ravens or might not be something we saw all year, but it's going to be for this game against the 49ers and what they do best. So I'm excited to see what he comes up with. Um, but I, I definitely wouldn't focus on, you know, all of these things. Like, we played the Rams a couple of years ago. We were, I think it was like 90-something percent of man-to-man defense, and we played 80 to 85 percent zone because that's what was best for us in that game, and we had weeks to prepare and do it and execute it. Speaking of the ones you played in, as you just were, what, what was your favorite? Uh, obviously the last one, I think, just playing with my brother. But, I mean, other than that, it was the first one we were able to win, Super Bowl 49 against the Seahawks. It was like finally, you know, when you come into New England and you're there with Tom, it's like, well, Tom won three Super Bowls before you. Now it's up to you guys to help him get back. And I think for us, finally getting over that mountain and, and getting to the top of it and being like, all right, we at least we at least won one and, and got him another one. And then obviously – it went on for a nice little run, but, you know, I think those, I think the book ends the first and the last. Dev, one of the things that concerns me a little bit, I know you talked about it briefly, is how, you know, coaches, it's about the relationships you built in the league. And it seems like, just from where I'm sitting, that Elliot Wolf is making some of these coaches hires of guys that he had connections with when he was in Green Bay. I'm concerned that I don't know if they're giving Mayo – the proper, um, uh, I guess, respect, re- not respect, but just allowing him to pick voice voice. Yeah, that's a good one. Allowing him to pick the guys that he feels best would be on this coaching staff. So I'm concerned with that. And then does that bleed into maybe him wanting a certain player versus maybe an Elliot Wolf want a certain player? Yeah, I, I do. I think that's the interesting part about what they have in place, because I think, I think Mayo kind of addressed it, too, when, you know, they asked him about the coaching staff and titles. And I think now when you don't – when you don't have the title of GM or you don't – like, now everyone assumes this guy's doing everything. This guy has a voice. This guy doesn't have a voice. So, we'll never know the inner workings of how Gerard feels in these situations. Does he feel heard? Does he feel like, hey, I'm sitting in these meetings, too, and I have an opinion, and they are hearing me. They know, like, that is – what's going to be the interesting thing. And I think for a lot of these other teams in the league, we hear about the collaboration. We hear about the head coach and the GM sitting down talking. We never hear those things in New England, and we never have. And I think – I know even I'm one of those people. I thought with, you know, Coach Belichick moving on and not being there, we would get like this open book of this is what we're doing. This is But I think it's it's more about that's how New England operates. That's – that's always, you know, what they've been, and it hasn't just been 
you know, how Bill operates. I think they believe in the style and what they do is going to be probably a little different, a little unique than everybody else's, but it's going to be what's best for the team. So um, I, I have no problems with those concerns when people look at it, but I think it's going to be ultimately all about do they win and then how comfortable Gerard feels, which I highly doubt he'll ever speak about. <laughs> yeah. Um, you, you may tell me different because you played, you actually played the game, but uh, you might you might tell me it doesn't matter. But more pressure on Mahomes and the Chiefs because of the potential dynasty, or on the Niners on Sunday. I think I think it's more pressure on the Chiefs, no doubt about it, because of what they've accomplished. They're like they're going to pull up these t- these scores, and somebody's going to be an underdog and all of that, but. The Chiefs, like, you got to feel like once we make it to this game, it's our game. But I think one of the interesting things is you heard opening night, right? The boos, everybody's against the Chiefs. I think that'll fuel them and make them feel when they're in the game that they are the underdogs. They're away. They're fighting and clawing. So I, I look forward to them taking that mentality uh, into the game. Dev, and the one thing that I look forward in this game, especially with San Francisco, when you talk about some of their linebackers uh, and their safety play, and you guys did a good job in it. Your teams, especially when you played against Kansas City, is slowing down Travis Kelsey. And I feel like every team, other than the Patriots, allows this guy just to run free, wide open. Do you think that that's got to be the biggest thing when the San San Francisco 49ers are planning for this football team is – we're taking Travis Kelsey away. You have to beat us some other way with some other player. Hey, Wiggy, you know, a lot of people complain, Bill Belichick, how he coaches and blah, blah, blah. You just said it. There was a staple of Bill Belichick's mentality. Don't lose to the guy that everybody watches on film. Kill every team. So I'm interested to see. I, a lot of these teams, and I would say even the better defenses, believe in what they do, right? We do what we do. That's why we're the best. And Baltimore went out there. I've watched Baltimore's defense all year. They're phenomenal. Great players across the board. They didn't touch Travis Kelsey. Nobody on the front. Everybody was focused on rushing the passer. The linebackers are getting to their drops. So Travis Kelsey, for all of the game, ran free into the secondary. And when he reads zone, he knows that he should keep running a route, if he should cut off a route, if he should break in, break out. Like, it's it's great watching as a fan and seeing how smart this guy plays the tight end position. But then you're like, defensively, like the defensive end, instead of rushing, lose two seconds on your rush and jam at the line of scrimmage. But a lot of these teams, they don't do it. So, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if San Fran just goes out there and says, we're a good defense, we're going to do what we do and just play. And if he walks away, I think, again, like we watched last week, 11 targets, 11 catches, Kansas City, to me, wins. Like that – He's their best guy. He gets everybody else going. It creates a comfort level for the team. Um, so that, for me, that would be my number one thing. I would, I would give up something else to make sure Kelsey doesn't beat me. All right, Devin. Yeah. Always great insight. Love. What are you doing for the game? Are you working? Yeah, I'm working. I'll be doing a pre halftime and post game show at Westwood One Radio. Okay. All right. All right. Well, hopefully they'll slow Travis Kelsey down. Every time I watch it, I'm like morons. I mean, I gotta believe. I gotta believe deep inside that you, more than any of us, do not want to see a Kansas City dynasty. I, no other dynasty ever. Uh I'm not like that. I, like my wife is like that. She's like, I just hope Kansas City doesn't win. I'm just like, <laughs> I don't know. Like we were, we were on the Patriots when everybody was hoping we didn't win. And we kept winning. It was pretty cool. So I'm not saying I want Kansas City to win, but I really – like, it wouldn't hurt me if they won another Super Bowl, I think. I think watching teams year in and year out, you know they're the best team, you know you got to beat them, and they continue to do it. To me, it's a lot of credit to how they do that. Seeing Kansas City be kind of – I mean, be bad this year, like really bad at times, and still be in this game, to me it's a unique thing. All right, Devin, we'll talk to you one more time next week after this is over, all right? I can't wait. It'll be so bittersweet. (laughs) (laughs) All right, that's Devin McCourty. Thanks, Devin.